Sir Tristram's presence loomed large over Cambridge stud from the first time he entered the paddocks in 1976. His Irish heritage and feisty nature quickly earned him the nickname Paddy. For much of the next two decades, Sir Tristram was to reign supreme, and not just at Cambridge. With the guidance of Sir Patrick Hogan, this pair was to forever change thoroughbred breeding, marketing and racing in Australasia. Sir Tristram was bought on pedigree, unseen by the ambitious owner of the fledgling Cambridge stud. Hogan wanted a horse with good breeding and a touch of speed, and that's what he was given in the son of Sir Ivor, an English derby and 2,000 guineas winner. Yet Sir Tristram's race record was not impressive, just two wins from 19 starts in Europe and the United States. The bloodstock agent asked to check Sir Tristram was also far from convinced about his potential. Then a fire and a well-aimed kick from a mare and the resulting confusion almost ended Sir Tristram's stud career before he reached New Zealand. So Hogan had a horse his agent wouldn't recommend, that he could barely afford, that some fellow shareholders didn't want a part of, and one the staff was scared to handle. Hardly a promising start. Hogan had no option but to put his faith in the feisty stallion who stood for a fee of $1,500. Sir Tristram didn't let him down, producing 37 foals in the first season, a fertility rate of 80%. As three-year-olds, they started to make their mark, and Sir Tristram and Cambridge stud never looked back. 29 of his first 34 yearlings were sold to Australia, and that's where the black-type wins started to roll in. The first Melbourne Cup success came in 1982, when Gurners Lane made it a double with his Caulfield Cup win. Coming home like a train. Kingston Town joined by Gurners Lane, and Gurners Lane gets up to win the cup. A neck to Kingston Town. Sir Tristram was to keep the statisticians busy. By the 1986-87 season, he was undisputed king. Champion Australian sire. Champion Australian sire of two-year-olds. Champion New Zealand sire. And the Dewar Stallion Award winner for combined New Zealand and Australian progeny. The next offspring to set hearts beating at Cambridge stud was Empire Rose in the 1988 Melbourne Cup. By that stage, Sir Tristram's stud fees had ridden to $200,000. An offer of $32 million was considered, but not for long. Cambridge stud was Paddy's home, forever. Hogan had honed his marketing skills at the Trentham sales, and Sir Tristram's sons and daughters brought the benefits in the 1980s and 90s. He provided the top-priced yearling at 12 national sales and often accounted for more than 25% of the premier session aggregate with just 10% of the entries. The peak years were 1987, with 38 yearlings selling for more than $9 million at an average price of 245000 In 1990, 20 yearlings were sold for almost $5.5 million at an average of $271,000. It was only natural then that Sir Tristram provided the first million dollar yearling in 1989. By the time Sir Tristram's stud career finished, he had sired 45 Group 1 winners, the second leading sire in the world, and altogether more than 220 black type performers. He'd been crowned Champion Australia sire six times, an extraordinary achievement for a New Zealand based stallion, and won nine Dewar Awards. The fact that Sir Tristram's daughters were equally in demand is underscored by the four champion Australian broodmare sire titles. In 1996, he was the first horse to be honoured with the award for outstanding contribution to racing. Another measure of a great sire is the sons to continue the dynasty. In Zabil, Sir Patrick was able to replace one super sire with another. The son outshone his brothers and even his father with 11 Dewar Stallion Awards by the time of Sir Tristram's induction. For all his temperamental ways, Sir Tristram was still very popular. Queen Elizabeth wanted to see the champion sire who had helped establish Cambridge stud to the forefront of the international breeding industry. And probably no other horse will ever receive a birthday celebration like this. 600 guests gathered at Cambridge stud in 1996 for a memorable 25th birthday party. Sir Tristram's final Melbourne Cup success came at the start of a new millennium when Brew added to the list of honours. Sadly, Sir Tristram wasn't around to hear the good news from Sir Patrick. The great sire was injured in a paddock accident in 1997 and couldn't be saved. 
the dynasty that he created continues to flourish on race courses all around the world. And now one of the great sires of the 20th century takes his place alongside his fellow knight in New Zealand's Racing Hall of Fame.